Military Intelligence Brigade, United States Army Intelligence and Security Command, Colonel Galen R. Payne. Welcome to the 704th Military Intelligence Brigade Change of Command Ceremony. I am Staff Sergeant Kyle Allen, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. Today's ceremony, steeped in military tradition, serves a dual function in rendering honors to the departing commander and providing official recognition of the transfer of authority to the soldiers and mission of the brigade to the new commander. The official change of command is accomplished with the transfer of the unit colors, which are a symbol of the combat readiness and esprit de corps of the unit. The reviewing officer for today's ceremony is the commanding general of the United States Army Intelligence and Security Command, Major General Michelle H. Bradenkamp. The host for today's ceremony is the commander of the 704th Military Intelligence Brigade, Colonel Galen R. Kane. The incoming commander is Colonel Tissa L. Strauss. The units in front of you participate in today's ceremony are, from left to right, the 229th Army Band from Parkville, Maryland, commanded by Chief Warrant Officer 3, Daniel Stinchcombe, who is accompanied by Drum Major Staff Sergeant Patrick Gleason. The Headquarters and Headquarters Company 704th Military Intelligence Brigade, Big Dogs. The 741st Military Intelligence Battalion, Silent Warriors. The 704th Military Intelligence Brigade Color Guard, under the direction of Command Sergeant Major Annie M. Reed. The 742nd Military Intelligence Battalion, Might Through Vigilance. The 743rd Military Intelligence Battalion, Birds of Prey. And the United States Army Technical Support Squadron. The Commander of Troops for today's ceremony is Major William B. Campbell, the Executive Officer of the 704th Military Intelligence Brigade. Colonel Kane and Colonel Strauss would like to extend a very warm welcome to our distinguished guests. Major General Retired John DeFreitas, Major General Douglas Coppinger, Chief Master Sergeant Brianne Fitzsimmons, Colonel Rhett Cox, Chief Warrant Officer 5 Retired Craig Jones, Mr. Chad Acey, Mr. Richard Sadler, Mr. Meriwether Sale, and Mr. David Kim. Also, welcome members of the adjacent commands and sister services distinguished service members, and friends and family of the Here and Everywhere Brigade. We would like to extend special thanks to the 229th Army Band for their participation in today's ceremony. I would like to remind everyone to stand and render the appropriate courtesy and honors to the colors during the national anthem and whenever appropriate. It is also customary to stand during the singing of the Army song at the conclusion of the ceremony. An important part of command is receiving support and encouragement when duties are demanding. Please observe the reviewing stand as the competitor in the 2022 Brigade Best Warrior Competition, Sergeant Richard Shatner, presents red roses on behalf of Colonel Kane to his wife, Sarah. Also receiving gifts are his daughter, Molly, and his son, Daniel. that Colonel Kane has exercised during his time in command at the Southern North Fort. Thank you for the strength, wisdom, and compassion that you have given him in order to fulfill the Army's number one priority of caring for her people. Thank you also for the skill and expertise with which he has guided and enhanced our organization in completing her missions while preparing for the future. May your blessing be upon him and his family as they transition to a new assignment. It is also with gratitude that we welcome our new commander, Colonel Strauss. We know and are confident, O oh God, that you have prepared her for this task, and we ask that you uphold and empower her to lead this unit with the greatest of skills, ability, and integrity. We ask that you grant her success and that your blessing would be upon her, her family, 
our brigade, our army, and our nation. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The ceremony will officially begin as the adjutant directs the band to sound attention. Adjutant's call has opened parades and reviews of American forces for over 150 years. Today it signifies the presentation of the formation to the commander of troops. consisted of fewer than 200 personnel and was co-located with the National Security Agency at Arlington Hall, Virginia until 1955 when the troop command relocated to Fort Meade, Maryland. In December 1957, the troop command became the Army Security Agency support element comprised of a headquarters detachment and three companies. Twenty years later, in January 1977, the Army Security Agency became the United States Army Intelligence and Security Command and the Army Security Agency support element was redesignated as the Continental United States Military Intelligence Group. In March 1981, the unit was reorganized into the 1st and 2nd Battalions. As a result of this reorganization, Field Station Key West became subordinate to the 2nd Battalion. On January 1st, 1988, the Continental United States Military Intelligence Group 
was redesignated as the 704th Military Intelligence Brigade and given its distinctive unit insignia. The Here and Everywhere Brigade was born. The 1st Battalion was redesignated as the 741st Military Intelligence Battalion, and the 2nd redesignated as the 742nd Military Intelligence Battalion. The brigade also absorbed what was then Field Station San Antonio, which was redesignated as the 748th Military Intelligence Battalion. Field Station Key West was moved under the 748th Military Intelligence Battalion and redesignated as the 749th Military Intelligence Company. On October 3, 1989, the 704th Military Intelligence Brigade activated the 743rd Military Intelligence Battalion Provisional at Fort B, and on October 3, 1990, the provisional status was lifted. The battalion moved to Buckley Space Force Base in the Aurora, Colorado in July 1998. On June 1, 1996, the 748th Military Intelligence Battalion was resubordinated to the 702nd Military Intelligence Group at Fort Gordon, Georgia. On October 25, 2005, the Brigade Shoulder Sleeve Insignia was approved. In July 2008, ISCOM provisionally activated the Army Network Warfare Battalion and formally designated it as the 744th Military Intelligence Battalion on October 1, 2009. On March 25, 2010, the 704th Military Intelligence Brigade activated the United States Army Technical Support Squadron. On December 1, 2011, the 744th Military Intelligence Battalion was resubordinated to the 780th Military Intelligence Brigade and redesignated as the 781st Military Intelligence Battalion. Additionally, while the majority of the brigade is located at Fort Meade, our soldiers are located throughout the United States and the world. During Colonel Kane's tenure, the brigade signals and intelligence professionals and dedicated support experts met all intelligence challenges and were prepared for all contingencies. The brigade's soldiers and civilians continually demonstrated a dedication to excellence that dramatically improved the unit, the army, and the nation. The soldiers before you represent a unit proud of its history, dedicated to excellence, and prepared to face tomorrow's challenges. They are our ever-watchful sentinels whose broad-based mission, worldwide responsibilities, and constant vigilance truly live up to the Brigade's motto, here and everywhere. originated around the 17th century in the days when armies first adopted the regimental system. It was decided that each regiment would be assigned a color. These colors not only made each res regiment easy to identify, but also served as a rallying point on the battlefield. Today we refer to our nation's flag, the army flag, and command flags as colors. rise for the playing of our national anthem.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the reviewing party are now moving into position for the passing of the brigade colors. The colors represent not only the unit, but the history and unity and loyalty of its soldiers. They are the symbol of the commander's authority and his responsibilities to the organization. The passing of the colors from Colonel Kane to Colonel Strauss is significant in many ways. The transition is symbolic of the transfer of command responsibility to a new leader. The command sergeant major is the guardian of the unit colors and represents continuity during the change of command. Command Sergeant Major Reed will pass the colors to Colonel Kane. Colonel Kane will in turn pass the colors to Major General Bradenkamp. The passing of the colors symbolizes the relinquishment of responsibility and authority from Colonel Kane. Major General Bradenkamp will then pass the colors to Colonel Strauss, charging her with responsibility and authority that comes with her position. Colonel Strauss returns the colors to Command Sergeant Major Reed. In accordance with paragraph 2-5 Alpha, Army Regulation 600-20, the undersigned assumes command of the 704th Military Intelligence Brigade, effective 28 June 2022, signed Tissa L. Strauss, Colonel, Military Intelligence, Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General of the United States Army Intelligence and Security Command, Major General Michelle H. Bradenkamp. All right, good morning, Michelle's families, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Major General Lieutenant Defrades, Deputy General Kropinger, now Major General, recently promoted, congratulations. We also reach a line, honored guests, families, friends, soldiers, and civilians of the mighty 704th Military Intelligence Brigade. Welcome. I'm extremely honored to be back here at Fort Meade today to preside over the change of command and the transfer of authority between the 704th outgoing commander, Colonel Galen Kane, and the incoming commander, Colonel Tissa Strauss. Many of us have served with Gail and Tissa over the years and know what great leaders each of them are. So to both of you, congratulations. First, I would like to give a special welcome to Gail and Tissa's families. I'd like to recognize Galen's wife, Sarah, and their children, Molly and Daniel. We're extremely grateful for your sacrifice and for providing your husband and your father with your full support over the past two years here at the 704th. And even more importantly, Sarah, we thank you for your support over the past 24 years for our families. I'd also like to welcome Galen's in-laws, Mr. Wade and Susan Lady, as well as his cousin Mike and Uncle Richard, who traveled far to be with the Kane family today. Thank you. Galen, I understand your parents, Jim and Phyllis, couldn't be here in person, but I know they are extremely proud of you and they're watching from your home plane back in Indiana. Mr. and Mrs. Kane, you raised an amazing man and leader. He has done so much for so many people, and we're grateful. Thank you. I would also like to provide a warm greeting to Colonel Strauss's family, her husband, Ira, their children, Isaac and Ty. We also welcome Sissa's father, Brian, and her stepmother, Deb, who traveled here from Texas, as well as your sisters. Shelly and Crystal. I know it means a lot to, to Tissa to have you all here today, so thank you for traveling. To the 229th Army Band, you look and you sound fantastic. We really appreciate you making today's celebration and change of command so extremely special. 
So to the men and the women of the 704th and Liza Davis Field, you look absolutely amazing. You have a number of folks out here to see you. You have a number of former 704th commanders out here to see you. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for recognizing the talented soldiers in front of you. operations in support of the Army, the Joint Force, and the National Security Agency. This brigade executes an incredibly complex global mission set, and over the past two years, Colonel Kane skillfully led the soldiers, civilians, and the Southern Force to achieve so much, especially through some very uncertain and challenging times. And I'd just like to highlight a few of Colonel Kane and the brigade's accomplishments. First, Colonel Kane strengthened our intelligence integration with the National Security Agency and truly focused on partnerships. His command emphasis on building strong partnerships resulted in the brigade increasing efforts in our training, operations, and overall integration across NSA and throughout the Army. He only created a climate focused on teamwork and working together with NSA counterparts and operating as one team. Galen, your integrated approach has absolutely made a huge difference amongst all of us. Colonel Kane also drove efforts to focus on readiness, ensuring his formation was always ready and able to support the needs of the agency and the Army. The brigade led out front for INSCOM through direct demonstration and by sharing best practices with the other major subordinate commands on how to be ready how to be adaptable, how to be resilient. And under Colonel King's leadership, the brigade achieved so much, all while facing challenges of the global pandemic, the U.S.'s transition from Afghanistan, Russia's invasion into Ukraine, and other crises and uncertainties that we've faced over the past two years. But through it all, this brigade continued to provide critical and enduring civic support to the nation. Galen. You accomplished much, but I believe your focus on our number one priority, our people, is where you've made the greatest impact. As you've led, developed, and genuinely took care of our soldiers, civilians, and the families of this community. We will truly be missed. And as you look out in front of you at the men and the women on this field that you've led, be proud of all you've done, all you have accomplished together while serving as a community of the Southern Fleet. We wish you, Sarah, and your family the best as you transition to serve in the Pentagon, knowing you'll continue to have tremendous impact on our army and the nation, and you're always going to be a part of this brigade and our each one families. Best of luck and Godspeed. We're extremely excited to welcome Colonel Kisa Strauss back into our team. Kisa is no stranger to INSCOM or the Southern Fleet. She is a proven intelligence Continue to build on the initiatives here at the 704th, and you'll care for the men and women and families of this brigade. We welcome you and I are back to the INSCOM team, and we so look forward to working with you. Again, congratulations. To the 704th and my brigade, you look outstanding. I am personally grateful for everything that you do each and every day to protect and secure our nation. On behalf of Command Sergeant Major Gillen, CW5, Irby, and myself, we are very, very proud to serve with each of you every day. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of INSCOM, thank you so much for being here. Army strong, vigilance always. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing commander of the 704th Military Intelligence Brigade, Colonel Galen R. Kane.
Hi, good morning, uh, Joe Bradenkamp, uh, General Coppinger, congratulations on your promotion. Uh, Mr. Fisher, uh, Chief Whaley, other distinguished guests, family members, and friends, thanks again for attending today's ceremony. Today's event really provides us the first opportunity in a really long time to celebrate our collective identity as the Air and Everwater Brigade. So with that, we're going to do a, a quick roll call. Where's my big dog, Zach? All right, Silent Warriors. Woo! Uh, they're not so silent after all, so that's good. Fight through vigilance. Fight through vigilance! Cool. Birds of prey. Birds of prey! All right, and the Krakens. All right, I commend you all on your superb performance and numerous accomplishments, and just thank you uh, for all that you do every day. Before we celebrate the 704th MI Brigade, I want to take a moment to reflect. Uh, as well, I'd like to make it uh, so my command is not always about unicorns and, and rainbows. Uh, on my watch, we've lost six members of our team. Uh, as we honor them, I'd ask that you look at the back of your programs. Uh, each death was tragic, uh, the pain for the families, and we will endure uh, their loss for many years to come. And I ask that we take a moment of silence to reflect upon their lives and how we can honor their legacies and prevent future tragedies in the future. Actually, thanks for joining me for that, that moment of silence for them. I have many initial thank yous and acknowledgements on front, so bear with me. Uh, Captain Ulrich, thank you for playing our national anthem. You're clearly extremely talented and, and blessed and gifted. I uh, appreciate you being here. The 29th Army Band from Nottingham, uh, Maryland, obviously very talented. Uh, you're commanded by CW3 Stinchum, who is accompanied by Drum Major Sergeant uh, Hemphill. Uh, your band is amazing, and uh, this, your presence just brings uh, this tradition of even greater life. Uh, Chaplain Smith, thank you for the invitation and blessing you placed upon the command and our, our soldiers and civilians. The work you've done to support the brigade and their families over the past year is very much appreciated, and I'm personally grateful that you are my chaplain. Uh, Command Sergeant Major Reed, Major Campbell, I thank you for preparing the brigade for today's ceremony. Job well done. And to the caller guard and to our narrator, Sergeant Allen, uh, you are fantastic. Thanks. This and Iron, welcome back to the Here and Everywhere Brigade. Uh, you're acquiring a very impressive group of professionals and terrific families. Uh, this I really enjoyed getting to know you, and um, I'm excited that the Army chose you to replace me because I know you're going to do a phenomenal job leading this brigade. And best wishes to you and your family. Uh, to Sarah, Molly, and Daniel, I uh, love you guys, and I'm uh, grateful that I've got a wonderful and supportive wife and mother uh, for our children. Kids, I'm proud of both of you. Uh, it continues to be fun to watch you all grow up. And Molly's always crushing it at IU, uh, where she just finished her, her freshman year. And Daniel's doing uh, great in school. He's an ROTC program there at Howard High and also plays baseball. We're, we're really proud of Daniel, too. But just keep working hard to achieve your goals. We know that uh, your mom and I will be there to help you out. Uh, my parents are here today because my mom is, is recovering from cancer treatment and my dad is serving as a, as a caregiver for her. Uh, they recently celebrated 53 years of marriage and I'm very thankful for their, their values and hard work and ethics that they instilled in me. Uh, I want to give them a round of applause because I'll eventually watch this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My brother Nate uh, is not present here today. Uh, I'm honestly not sure that he'll ever leave our southern Indiana community again. Uh, Al Castro refers to it as northern Kentucky, uh, but it is indeed in southern Indiana. But my brother equally dislikes anything not Indiana, so I'm not surprised by this. Uh, I'd also like to recognize my family uh, from Indiana, Ohio, who made the trip. Sarah's parents, Wade and Susan, my cousin Mike Burkhart, and his, his daughter Janae, and our Uncle Richard. Uh, to brag a little bit on my in-laws, uh, Susan, uh, besides being an amazing woman, she recently retired from owning and operating a small business on Main Street back home and been in her family for 120 years. Uh, Wade is equally impressive. Uh, he too recently retired from operating his family farm after 50 plus years. We thought like an army crew of pointers a long time, right? Uh, but this farm is located in neighboring Illinois. He's the fifth generation to run that farm. It's worth noting that most farms don't make it beyond the second generation. His work ethic and business sense are amazing. Uncle Richard, another very impressive man, retired a few years ago after successfully managing his family's lumber company in Cincinnati for many years. 
I also have to say that Richard is a very loyal taxpayer. Uh, my cousin Mike, uh, also recently retired from farming, nearly 50 years in that profession. Uh, he's also, so I'm majorly impressed by this, he's a public figure on TikTok and has 50,000 followers. No joke, and he had 35,000 last time I asked, so he went at 15, so he must have done something right. But uh, Mike and his family lead a nonprofit organization also called the Travis Burkhart Foundation. It was sort of to help those in need in the same way their family was helped after their son Travis was involved in an accident and resulted in a traumatic brain injury. Travis is an amazing kid and doing well today. But the foundation has provided hundreds of thousands worth of money, aid, food, gift cards, and information to families in need. And I think Mike deserves recognition for that. So Sarah and I started our, our Army journey uh, 24 years ago, and we were talking this morning, who would have ever guessed that when we went off as a go bar lieutenant off to Fort Huachuca together, hauling the geo prison uh, trailer behind our, our Jeep Cherokee, that we would be here today. But we've obviously had great support from our family, friends, and neighbors, and they've always supported us 100%. As such, I'd like to recognize a couple of our extended Army family friends that are here, specifically our Rockburn Township neighbors, Jim and LaDonna May, Jim is a retired firefighter from Montgomery County and an Army veteran. Our other neighbors, uh, Marty Schmidt and the Bennetts, uh, thanks for being here as well. There's also several senior mentors that I greatly appreciate that I'm going to talk a little bit about. I'm going to start with Major Retired Paul Cudney. He was my MS3 instructor at Indiana State back in 1996. Paul is here today with his wife. And Paul, I thank you for teaching me the fundamentals of infantry small unit tactics that got me through ROTC advanced camp. Selling operationally today, and I, I thank him for that. Major General DeFreitas and, and his wife Mina. Uh, Major General DeFreitas picked me as his aide back in 2006. Uh, his investment in me changed my life. Sir, I, I value your friendship and continued mentorship greatly. Major General Braden Camp and Brigadier General Select Cox, my two brigade commanders, uh, stood uh, with me on this parade field seven and five years ago. I appreciate your mentorship and value your friendship even more. Uh, your presence makes it really special uh, here today. Ma'am, I'll, I'll miss our mutually beneficial therapeutic chats, uh, but I know that uh, we'll continue to stay connected and in touch with one another. And once I figure out exactly what job I'm doing in the, in the, in the Pentagon, I'll, I'll give you my number. <laughs> Major General Coppinger, uh, the Deputy Chief of the Central Security Service, I very much enjoyed working with you and your team. Uh, your efforts to revitalize CSS will benefit this enterprise for many years, so, so thank you. Retired Kevin, the past master Degnan is here uh, today. And it's worth noting that Carl Degnan was was uh, nicknamed the past master. <laughs> I think he actually mentioned that he worked into death when he was a young officer. But uh, Kevin was my battalion commander. Uh, I was a company commander, and the, the Degnans were Daniel's godparents, and they're the only people that I would trust to raise my son. And that's how great the Degnan family is. The Colonel Degnan pushed me towards SIGINT you know, when I was a company commander. We were a good fellow together. But he told me, people are a lot more honest when they don't know that you're listening to them speak. <laughs> he also told me that human intelligence, you have to deal with various people all the time, so it was a pretty easy choice uh, to follow his guidance and fix SIGINT. Colonel retired, uh, John Swartz and his wife Julia are here. Colonel Swartz was the commander in NSA Georgia. When I served with him there, and he also commanded the 741st when I was in JOCCP. So when it, when it comes to leading an enterprise, I learned from the best, and that's you, John Sports. Thank you. Command Sergeant Major retired Sean May, uh, also known as my Sergeant Major, who probably will be for the rest of my life. Uh, his wife and Julie, Sean, your ability to motivate and inspire, even though you're retired, is like no other. And hubba hubba, the May Hua lamp shines bright wherever you are, and his joy bucket is always full. Daniel and Molly's junior ROTC instructor from Howard High School is here, Sergeant so First Class Boone. Uh, he's a career logistician. Stone Ange, you'd be proud of him. But Sergeant Boone does an exceptional job leading the young people and mentoring them at Howard High. 
and thank you for taking care of our, our youth because it's a tough job and some feedback for you I think my kids agree that they just appreciate how you take care of them now battle bays here bt coop craig jones Mulder, gory castro crow tone my inscom partners kim sell ac sadler it's great to see you all to the members of my squad and i thank colonel retired heidi urban for reminding me of the importance of the squad your comments two years ago had a profound impact on the way i thought about the squad that i hadn't thought about in for a few years for my squad members, Crowder, Tannis, Perez, Bowman, Reed, Click, Fisher, Davis, Whaley, Sperry, Walner, Campbell, Guan, Mr. G, Robinry, Banks, Albers, Gerstein, Pedraza, Soupies, Huddleston, Callahan, Hughes, Danderson, Knight, Maples, Rittenhouse, and certainly but not la la certainly not least, uh, Colonel Mike Kulikowski. I'm thankful for each of you squad members. And I couldn't have asked for a stronger performance than what you all delivered every day for our people in the mission. Steadfast always is the motto of our Department of Army Civilians, numbering 113 strong. They are truly the backbone of this brigade here at Fort Meade and across the INSCOM enterprise. Specifically, Mr. Gonzalez, we recognized and celebrated his 40th year of government service recently in the gazebo. <laughs> As many of you already know, I view all forms of feedback, even the feedback from the Inspector General, as, as a gift. I especially enjoy written, written feedback from Command Climate Assessments, and I wanted to share some feedback that I received about Command Sergeant Major Reed and myself. Quote, to be honest, this is one of the best command teams Commander Sergeant Major I've ever worked with. They are mutually supportive and sync with each other, but they are also completely comfortable stating contrarian views uh, with each other. Both have the complete trust and confidence in each other, and it shows. Command Sergeant Major Reed, you've been a great battle buddy. Your humility, confidence, passion to care for others, as well as your level of professional and personal resilience that you display daily as a source of motivation for all of us. I've been in the Army for 29 years. I've learned a long time ago that people, specifically our soldiers, civilians, and NCOs, are the strength of our Army. Now, speaking about the importance of people, go out. Make, Mike, make sure you don't tell off Watchman that I actually quoted a Green Bay Packer quarterback. But Aaron Rodgers uh, said something recently that I wrote down I thought was important. They said, history is important. The legacy is so many people that have come before you, but the people, that's what that's the most important thing. People make the organization. People make a business. Sometimes that gets forgotten. Culture is, bit, is built brick by brick. The foundation of it is by the people, not by the organization, not by the building, not by the corporation, it's felt by people. A wise man from Indiana also told me that there are three types of people in this world. Winners, losers, and survivors. The people assigned to the 704th MI Brigade are clearly winners. The soldiers standing before us represent 1,800 plus professionals that are proud, tough, and highly motivated. And they're the best trained and the most impactful brigade in our army. The soldiers and civilians of 704 have a reputation for winning and sustained mission excellence. Our officers, warrant officers, NCOs, soldiers, and civilians are truly here and everywhere, and they're in the fight every day, CONUS, OCONUS, and deployed, conducting cutting-edge intelligence operations and providing critical enabling capabilities to the nation, the joint force, and our army. Over the past two years, I've observed members of our brigade masterfully leverage the intelligence process deliver first-class intelligence support all the way up to the Secretary of Defense and, our, and the President of the United States and to the tactical edge, realizing the vision that Sergeant Major Reed and I set two years ago. What they do is absolutely critical to the safety and security of the deployed joint force, our nation's policymakers, and the nation's whole. The Air and Everywhere Brigade, you motivate and inspire me every day because you get results and you enable outcomes. Be proud of the fact that you're leading the nation's efforts to compete with and defeat our nation's adversaries that wish us harm. Much of your work is rated as having major significance to the defense of our great nation. As our nation and military continues to relearn the importance of competing globally with our adversaries, I rest easy at night because I know this unit is positioned to provide the insight and understanding we need to defeat them. To the members of the Air and Air Brigade, you all have a record success that should make you very proud. Job well done, each and every morning. In closing, God
God bless the family by allowing my life journey to include an opportunity to command this brigade and serve with great people. I depart with my joy bucket full. Know that I'll be riding the Army bus a bit longer with all of you as I roll out. But please know that commanding the Army Signet Brigade has truly been an honor of a lifetime. I will forever be grateful for the opportunity to serve and work with every single one of you for the past two years as your commander. And I wish you all the best. Vigil and always, here and everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 704th Military Intelligence Brigade, Colonel Tissa L. Strauss.
This last procedure, the most traditional part of the entire ceremony, is the pass and review. From the earliest times, the pass and review has demonstrated the glory and strength of the assembled soldiers. Please stand by and render appropriate honors as the colors pass your position. Yeah. <laughs> 
Queen of the Army song. This concludes today's ceremony. A receiving line will be formed to the front of the reviewing stand for those who wish to bid a final farewell to Colonel Payne. A reception will follow at the Potomac Place Community Center with directions inside your ceremony program. So welcome, Colonel Strauss. And